Welcome, welcome. This is Mech School. I'm Mark. Uh, today I'm going to be, I'm doing a re-recording of a stream I did a few weeks ago. Uh, this is going to be how to make your own custom gaming dice. The idea kind of popped in my head a few weeks ago. The, like, hey, I can easily do that in Tinkercad. I should give that a shot. And uh, it, it's worked out pretty well. I've gone through a couple uh, generations of dice now. I started out doing uh, one for the little unit logo I use for myself uh, in, in Battletech. And that's this guy right here. And then uh, I stepped up and I did one uh, for a friend of mine. And then uh, I was just having fun with it and decided to do a, a Grey Death Legion. I've been having a good time with it. It's it's pretty simple um, and, and pretty quick. Now, I wouldn't take these dice and roll with them. I would use these for uh, marking movement. So in, in Battletech, the tabletop game, when you move, you mark your movement modifiers by laying a dice down. Uh, next to you. So it's like a plus to the, the to two hit number. So a six is represented by the logo and uh, it actually means zero. So it's it's kind of zero through five is your, your movement modifiers on your six sided dice in Battletech. Kind of first things first, I have some um, some unit dice that I had picked up at Metcon the last couple of years and they're, they're pretty available. You can find them online, uh, but I'm going to take one of these. I'm going to get my micrometer and I am going to measure it out. And this comes to uh, exactly 16 millimeters. So that's the size of the, the dice that we're gonna make. Now, in Tinkercad, conveniently, someone has created a dice shape. And if we take a look, we see it's already set to 16 millimeters. So perfect, we're already, we're already well into it. Um, so I've done, as you can see, I've done three that are this dice shape and it's it's a, it's pretty cool. I like it, but I wanted to try and experiment and just do something else. So I'm gonna grab a box. We're gonna set this to 16. All right, so now that's 16 millimeters. And since it's a box and this is Tinkercad, we can we can do a lot of things to it. We can uh, change the radius. Uh, I do not want a geometric dice like that. I don't think that's going to look too great. But I can I can mess with my steps and round all those edges. Let me uh, get a different color for you. There you go. And I think that's going to look kind of cool with the the rounded edges. And I can go a little little more with it. Cool. So that's that's pretty smooth. I think that'll look neat. And it gives me a little more work area for whatever logo or image I want to put in there. So I've already done my logo and my friends and I've done the Great Death Legion. So now I'm just uh, for the sake of this video, we're going to do some um, some sweet, sweet signer action. Um, so we are going to bring up Adobe Illustrator. All right, so I have a file opened up in Illustrator. So this is um, the the Steiner Fist logo. I've actually, I had been working on this for a, uh, a t-shirt that I wanna do. I just went, gonna cut some vinyl pieces out and uh, layer them and that'll be a t-shirt eventually. I'll get to that. Uh, so what we need <clears throat> is a one color design that I can export as an SVG. So you don't need to do this in Illustrator. You can do this in PowerPoint or Paint or any other program where you can create uh, an image, one color and export it as an SVG. Uh, so what's gonna happen is we'll take the, the one color design, we'll create a three dimensional block out of it and then subtract to that from the dice. Uh, so I kind of wanna do I'm gonna experiment and I, I really like to try and get multiple colors. The dice are gonna be blue, uh, blue resin. So that's gonna be that infill. So uh, that will not be subtracted from what we're doing. The black is gonna be subtracted and then that will be filled in with a wash. And I would like a, the white circle to be there as well. So how to do that best? I think 
I think I might be looking for like a multi-layer thing, which I haven't done before. I do need to do the circle in Illustrator. Punk. Because the circle needs to not have that. And I need to back this up a bit because I deleted a bunch of important shit. I have one of those. I have this one. Let's uh, release. There we go. So this guy. And we'll copy and paste that circle. I'm going to send... Send the circle to the back, but we're going to color it first. We're going to give it a little color so I can see it. These two things, I'm going to center them on each other. And then I'm going to remove the fist from the circle. Boom. So this is going to be one SVG that I'm going to uh, export. And that's going to be kind of the background layer. And the reason I do this is because if I delete that whole circle, then none, when I go to sand it, none of it's going to be level and it's just not going to work. So we need that. So let's do a quick, let me get rid of those so I can do this export, export, export as, uh, I'm not using the art forward, I'm going to go to the SVG, I'm just going to call this circle.svg export. Okay, good. And I'm gonna undo, bring that stuff back. And then my fist should already be good. It should already be the size I need. So we are going to here. Uh, the fist is okay. But I'm gonna group it with the circle when I bring the circle in. So import, I'm going to do the Steiner SVG again at 100. And I'm going to import circle SVG also at 100, just the art import. Okay. So we are going to align these two suckers and Well, that's not fair. They should align. All right. So we're going to put this to 0.1 just so I can get some decent movement. Ooh, look at that. It's stretched. Just interesting that it, it didn't bring it over perfectly. But that's not bad. That's not bad. I'll have to clean up this little thing over here, but we're going to be okay. All right. So funny. I could have done easy stuff that I've already done, and this would have gone much more easily, but who doesn't like a challenge, right? We're going to make that one for now. And I need to clean that nonsense up. So we're gonna grab a cylinder. I gotta turn that off. Oops. Let's duplicate this guy. And again, I'll just group all that together and get rid of that weird little whatever that was. Okay, so now I've got these. I think what we're gonna do is make the circle four. I'll make that point two. Okay, 
and it's smidge too big, no big deal. I'm shrink it down. I'm just going to shift and drag. Okay. So some of it's a little, can be a little bit tight, and that's all right. So now when we group all that together, we've got a relief. So it'll get, I'll prime it. Everything gets painted white. Then I sand it. And when I sand it, the white's going to come off of the, the most raised pieces. And then I will put a wash in here that'll fill all these little lines with black except for the highlights that I want there. So those should stay white. Everything should be black around it and then the white circle and then it'll have a little, the edge of the circle uh, will darken up from the wash. So that's that's the plan. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. This is not super deep. Looking at the other pieces I've done, is it really? Maybe it is deep. Uh, okay. Oh yeah. So we're gonna make that point three. We're gonna make this point four five. We'll just go point five, so half a millimeter. And we're gonna line it again just to be safe. Group it again. Make it a hole. This is just to give me a little more room to, to play with. Make sure that's aligned and it is. And we'll group it. And there we go. Okay. So these other ones uh, that I did, uh, I found that they didn't need to be as deep as I had made them. No big deal. I've uh, I've just made this one a little a little more shallow. Okay. So now um, now the kind of fun easy stuff for the uh, the holes or the circles in the dice that represent the numbers. We're gonna take a half sphere, bring it in, gonna shrink it down a decent amount, and then rotate it so it's in the position we need it to be in. So I'm gonna give it a ninety and a one eighty. That's just going to turn it the direction we need. This is going to be the one. Uh, I think it might be a little big. We're going to shrink it down just a smidge more. There we go. Now I think it's too small. I think that's perfect. Make that a hole. Then I'm going to duplicate him. And again, so we've got our two, I'm trying to remember, yeah, two's pretty spread out. So we've got our two, I'm gonna group these together. I'm gonna rotate them to a 45 and bam, that's our two. This is gonna be three. So I'm gonna duplicate it. And again, group them, rotate that 45, cool. And we'll go back to the original, go one. And we're gonna duplicate it. Kind of guesstimating my sizes right now. There's our four, I'll group that. So five, I'm gonna take my three, duplicate it. I'm gonna unselect it. Anytime you duplicate something, if you immediately duplicate again, that duplicate is gonna re reproduce whatever changes you made to the previous duplicate. So if you stretched it, moved it, 
resized it, whatever, it'll do that again and end up distorting your thing. So the trick is to deselect, then reselect, then you can duplicate. Uh, so I'm gonna take this guy and rotate it. There you go, 45 and 45 is 90. I'll get rid of the extras. Oop. Are these grouped? Who would do that? Let's ungroup all this nonsense. So I can grab the extra middle one and delete it. Now I'll group it again, make it a whole. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and then the six is the, the fist. Uh, looks like, oh, that's not bad. That's sort of, Work that right off the bat. So each time I place one of these, we're gonna align it. Cool. And then we're gonna come in real close. And for consistency, what I'm gonna have this do is, ugh, punk. I'm gonna bring this in, I'm gonna turn that off. And I want it to, just, just barely not go beneath the surface and I can group it. Cool. So five, and we'll do the three next. So we'll rotate this guy. And bring in my three. And again, we'll align it. And remember, I want this to just barely not penetrate. So once it changes color, it's underneath, and then we're gonna bring it back out. So it's definitely in there. Cool. Uh, so five, three. We'll do the two next. Two could probably stand to be stretched out a smidge more. Kind of looks a little awkward. Uh, so let's, yeah. let's see if we can rotate that 45. Good. And we will ungroup it. And I'm just going to space it out a little. Okay, we'll group it back up, make it whole, rotate it to 45. And we'll do our align. just below the surface and back out a bit, group it up. What's that two? And over here we've got four. Where do you go? There it is. So the four might actually be too spread out. Oh, that's not bad. And again, put it in there, and then back it out just a pinch, group it up. Well, the lines are red like that, it's thinking. But sometimes it just gets a little hung up and you gotta remind it. There it goes. And then the one last and literally least. Well, oh, no, I just need to rotate it this way. Oops.
and that's it. We've got us a custom gaming dice for marking movement. Okay. I'm just gonna make it the same color as these other guys. It's gonna be it's gonna be kind of interesting. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing if this works. And I just realized we've got this super thin little line here. That's not gonna work. So we're gonna ungroup, ungroup, ungroup. Ungroup, ungroup, ungroup. Here we go. Ungroup. I'm just going to stretch this out. Group. Hole. That's almost better. There's still a couple of holes. So we're going to do... Man. I think I might just let it go like that. Because I don't think these are going to actually print. If they do, they'll clean off easily enough. Okay, we are at that point now. I've got my dice ready to go. So I'm gonna grab it, export, STL. Save it. And now we're gonna bring it into our slicer. So it's, a, it's such a basic shape, I don't think I need to take it in a mesh mixer and correct it. So we're just gonna bring it right into the slicer. Okay, so here's where it gets interesting. I can't print it like that without it being kind of jacked up. So we're gonna take it and we're gonna rotate it 45 on the X and 45 on the Y. And now we're going to add us uh, some supports. I'm going to do one heavy right at the point at which this corner is touching. And then I'm going to do a couple mediums just to, to keep it from, from wobbling and wiggling. Just right up these... Uh, right up those sides there just like that and hopefully that'll do it i'm going to do a duplicate 
and I'm going to do, I'm only going to do three of these. I'm going to try and keep them near the center where the light is strongest on the DLP. Cool. Well, we'll see how this turns out. So for resin, I'm using Monocure uh, Rapid Clear. Uh, but I'm putting some dye in it to turn it blue. So here's my 3D Rapid uh, photopolymer here, clear. And I picked up this set uh, off of a website and we've got some, some blue pigment. So I'm gonna mix these together and print this in blue resin. All right, real quick, I'm just gonna mix up my blue resin, so I'm taking my Monocure 3D Rapid. Uh, I've already shaken it pretty good, but everything you, <laughs> every resin you put in the printer, you wanna shake it up really good. First, that's step one. All right. I'm just gonna kinda guesstimate how much three dice would be, plus a little extra. And I've still got a little bit of blue from last time that I'll add to this. So I'm gonna put in one drop and give it a mix just so you can kind of see what its potency is. See, that's a, it's a light blue. But it's still gonna be pretty transparent. So, another drop. And I have not, uh, I don't have any white resin on hand. If I did, I'd probably mix a little of that in here. I'd like it to be a little bit translucent, but ultimately, like clear dice don't work. If you can see through them, you end up seeing the numbers on the other side. and It just doesn't work out. Cool. So, it's a nice blue. get this into the printer. I'm going to refer to this list and kind of keep it pretty close. So we got our Monocure Rapid Clears. Um, I don't need, this isn't a, a gaming mini. This isn't a really high detail model. So I don't need to have a 0 0.025 layer height. That's just going to make it take forever to print. Um, I'll probably go with 0 0.05. I could get away with probably 0.1. So that's one tenth of a millimeter. I could get away with that. I'm not going to, I'll just do the, the 0 0.05. So let's, uh, bring up this thing. 0 0.05. It's already in there. Normal exposure time on here. These guys have it for anywhere from seven to 12.5. Here's an 18. I'm going to go kind of in the middle and probably just stick with the 12. A couple of people have done 12 and been successful. So we'll go 12. Off time is going to be 6.5. That's the default for the printer. Um, this, I could put it 50 in here. I could put one in here. It wouldn't change how long it takes it to print. What it will do is affect the, uh, the estimate on how long uh, the print's going to take once I do the slice. Bottom exposure is next. Bottom exposure, pretty consistently 60. We'll just stick with that. And bottom layers, we got five, six, eight. So we're just going to go seven. And that's really only going to affect these um, uh, sleds down here. But we want them to stick. So seven and 60 is going to be, that'll be fine. So those are all our settings in the slicer. So we will slice it and i'm just gonna put this uh i've got a folder on my desktop called to print and we'll put it there it's taking a little longer than i thought it would for for something so small and uh estimated print time three hours and three minutes all right here we are at the photon 
I, I wear gloves because I don't like getting resin all over my fingers and hands. Ugh. The resin is everywhere. Uh, the one place you want to make sure you don't get it is on this screen. If you get resin on that screen and you put the, uh, the vat in there and it cures the resin to the FEP, you've got problems and you, you're going to end up needing to replace things. For a long time, I was just leaving the printer, just leaving it on for long periods of time. Uh, but it, it has a tendency to get not hot, but it more it definitely warms up. So when I'm not using it, I turn it off now. Uh, another habit I've gotten into. There's the switch. Another habit I've gotten into is when I turn it on for the first time, I do a test of the uh, the screen. To test the screen. Uh, I'm just going to go to Tools, UV Detection, Next, and we should see a little square show up. So you saw it there for just a second, and um, there was an error that was happening on the AnyCubic Photons where only half of the screen was displaying. It should have been corrected by a uh, firmware update that I did. Uh, it only happened to me a couple times, but uh, one of the times it happened to me was like a nine hour print and I didn't find out until the next day. So it's it's pretty frustrating if you have that error. So in order just to make sure I'm not gonna have that problem, I like to test the screen out before I do anything else. And I do that without the VAT installed because uh, I don't completely clean out my VAT anymore. Um, the FEP is pretty sensitive. Like I don't let paper towel come in contact with the the FEP. Uh, if I'm gonna wipe down the FEP, I'll use a uh, microfiber towel and a little bit of uh, just isopropyl alcohol. But normally, if I just if I scrape it out really good, there's only a little tiny bit of previous resin residue in there and it's fine it's not an issue i'd rather have that tiny bit of cross contamination than do something that's going to hurt my fep all right i've got the uh the blue resin we mixed up let me get that in there Now I'm going to take my thumb drive, plug it in, go to print, scroll down until I find it. Here we go. Dice and print. And that's it. Now I'm going to wait for three or four hours and see how it looks. Alright, so Simple enough, I take my plastic uh, scraper and I'm just going to try and separate the sleds from the bed. There we go. And I'll clean this off separately. I will use paper towel on that, paper towel, isopropyl alcohol, and I'll get all the, the resin cleaned off of here. Uh, these, I'm going to go ahead and dip them into my can of isopropyl and let them soak for a couple of minutes, just two, three minutes. And then um, I'm going to pull them out and I'm going to scrub them with a toothbrush, rinse them off again, and then I will cut the uh, supports. So, bloop. All right, it's been a couple minutes. I'll take this out. I've got a toothbrush standing by just for this. And I just give this a little scrub. while I've got a good grip of it and it's all together. Just kind of a preliminary scrub down. Kind of interesting, The uh, all the dice I did before were that different shape, so it's a little weird working with a, a new shape. This is this is the part about 3D printing that I hate the most. Removing the supports. Just 
gotta be just want to be careful and precise. I want to leave as little of a blemish on the uh, on the final product as possible. This one's the this one's got a little bit of a deformation on the three. This one's three. That was okay. Maybe the corners up a little bit. Cool. Uh, so once more into here. I'm just gonna give it one more little little scrub down. Just want to make sure I get every side. Big part is just getting into the uh, the the holes and then the the contours of the the logo. The logo's got to be clean, or what I try to do with it with the paint leader isn't going to work. So that's one. two and here's three okay so that that is that so now I'm gonna take the dice uh, I'm gonna go run them under some water and then dry them off and we will cure them in my UV can all right the uh, the dice are clean. Um, so I rinse them off in water. The re the isopropyl that gets on here does a pretty good job of getting the liquid resin off, but it can be left on here in very thin layers. And if you cure it like that, you'll get this white film in, in some of the nooks and crannies. So uh, best practice is rinse it off with water. Sometimes I'll use uh, like hot soapy water, just dish soap and a toothbrush and I'll scrub it some more. Um, but these are, these are looking pretty good. It's, you can kind of feel that they're still a little soft. So they definitely need to cure. Um, they looked kind of, you know, glass-like when I pulled them off the printer and they had that, that sheen from the resin being on there. And after soaking in the, the alcohol and scrubbing it repeatedly, they fogged up pretty good. And once they're done in the, in the can, they're gonna be pretty foggy. But later on, we're gonna spray it with a, a, a clear gloss uh, finish and they're gonna glass up again real nice. So, uh, curing. This isn't mentioned much um, online. They, the YouTube videos I watch, they say, oh, we're going to cure it. And that's sort of it. Um, so what I have is uh, a paint can and my wife bought me some uh, UV LED strips. And basically it's got a tape on the back and I wrapped it around the inside of the can. So uh, that's, that's how I cure. Uh, I've got this Turner, just a little, runs off a double-A battery. So I'll put this down inside the can, put the dice on top of it, and they'll, they'll turn in the UV light and cure, and that'll be it. So I'm going to let these go um, probably a good like 10 minutes or so. I want to cook them pretty good, and I'll, I'll probably rotate them at some point uh, halfway through. Uh, Resins, if you cure them too long, they'll discolor and especially clear. But with the uh, the pigments inside here, I don't believe that it's going to be any kind of an issue. So we'll get this down inside the can, let it cure for a bit, and then we're on to the next step. The dice, uh, once cured, I can I can feel that they're cured. They felt almost tacky before, and now they're they're nice and solid. There's nothing sticky about them and I can tell you now they're not they're not perfect cubes they're they're not real bad this one's a little jacked up uh, they're not real bad but they're definitely not perfect cubes I imagine if you were to roll them up they'd be they'd be random enough but uh I yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't trust that so what we're going to do uh, is I'm just going to put a little bit of primer in here. Primer is just always better. Normally I would do this 
out in my uh, garage. I have a little desk out there for this kind of thing, but it is something like 11 degrees out. So I'm opting for the indoors today. So I want to thin this down pretty good. I don't need a thick coat. I just need it to dry enough where when I put my paint on, the paint's going to stick and be thick enough that it'll, it'll look good. There we go. And I want it to be, I want it to be pretty thin. Oof, this is strong stuff. So that I'm using white, which is fairly opaque. But I don't think it'd be enough where it would look solid. without a couple of coats. So I'd really rather just give it a good prime and then not have to worry about it. And there's just enough of a lip inside there that uh, I can freehand this without too much trouble. Cool. So that's a that's not a bad little primed up circle. I'm just gonna try and do the other two real quick. Um, you know, I'm starting with the 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 big money piece. Uh, but all the all the little circles for the numbers are gonna have to get primed as well. And this stuff, because it's thin, wants to dry up pretty quickly. So. Okay, so that's two. Cool. Three. Let's go back to the first and I'm just gonna to touch up all the little holes. And this doesn't have to be perfect because I will be sanding the, the surface of every side of this and that's gonna clean up any, any excess that spills over. And it's gonna help me uh, just make it real nice and, and smooth looking once the time comes. With the primer dry, I can move on to pink. <clears throat> I'm using just uh, just Tamiya, it's a flat white acrylic. Um, I, I have it on hand, and it's that was the primer I had on hand. So uh, you can really get away with using kind of whatever your preference is here. The primer makes it pretty easy. You could get away with putting just about any color you wanted on here now that it's primed. I'm mostly concerned with getting it on the white areas, which is the outer part of the circle and highlights inside the fist or glove or gauntlet or whatever. And then in addition to that, I'm just going to fill up the, uh, the holes. One of the things I like about this project is that you can definitely get away with being a little sloppy because it's going to get cleaned up. So I'm going to let that dry for a minute and then I will do a second coat. So 
I want it to be a nice, fairly stark white. All right, guys, we're almost done. If you've made it through this much of the video, I'm pretty impressed. Uh, so what we've got left, we've got our dice. It's printed, it's painted, and now we're gonna sand it down and then we'll put some clear varnish on it and see how it goes. All right, this part's pretty easy. Uh, we're gonna take our dice. I have a glass cutting board that I'm gonna use. It is perfectly flat and it's hard. So that's gonna enable me to keep a nice flat surface on here. Um, I would not sand this just using sandpaper in your hand. Uh, you could use like a sanding block, but again, th this is perfectly flat, so it's gonna help me get a, a good surface. Um, I've got some sandpaper here in varying uh, grits, and I'm gonna go from coarse and work my way up to fine. Uh, I don't need to do much on the very coarse. This is just here to take off that initial coat of paint and primer that bled over. I'm just gonna rotate through the sides. And okay, I've hit all the sides, so that's that roughs it up a little bit. Um, I can clearly see the sides I got because they're they're pretty faded now. Uh, I do have some sanding blocks, and what I'll do with these is kind of get these rounded corners just ever so slightly. Just um, I want to make sure that any little blemishes from the uh, supports are just cleaned up ever so so much. Uh, doing this by hand is a good way to kind of screw this thing up, so I, I just want to limit that as much as I can. And then the sides that have the uh, supports, I get, I'll give those a little bit more attention. But I cut them as close as I could with the clippers, so there really shouldn't be too much there. Okay. So now I'll just step up in coarseness. Okay, and that might be it for the sanding. Um, what I'm gonna do next is uh, try and just clean this up a little bit. Uh, if you've got some canned air, that's great. Uh, I've got an airbrush here. Uh, I'm just not gonna put any paint in it, but I'm gonna use that to, to blow out uh, the dust that got inside all the little pieces. Okay, so now I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna run it under some, some water just to clean it up a little more. I was hoping I can get in focus, sorry. Uh, clean up a little more and then I will touch up a little bit of the white where I went over with the wash and then we are going to uh, spray it. Okay, the dice are sanded. I've touched up the white on a little bit of it. Uh, that really shouldn't be necessary. It's only It was only because I tried to do three different layers with the, the white and the wash. If you're doing a simple design like the ones I did before on, uh, on the unit logos, um, it's, it's not going to be an issue for you. It's just going to be fill it in with paint, sand it off, done. Real simple. So the next step, we're going to coat it. I've got some, uh, this is just Krylon UV resistant clear acrylic coating gloss. Uh, so I'll spray it down with that. Uh, what I like to do is I take a uh, poster tack, which is just this white putty that comes in these little strips. Um, just mush a little up. I've got some uh, some old baby food jars. I stick it on there. Take my my dice. Just stick it on there, and that way I don't have to touch it, and I can just spray it. All right, uh, I'm in my garage. I've got the garage door open. Normally I'd go outside or something, but it is freezing outside, so I'm not doing that. I'm just gonna do it right here. Um, this is just real quick, right? Just a little. A little, a little spray poo, and that's it. So I'm gonna take this, uh, let it dry, and then uh, maybe an hour or so, I'll come over, just boop, 
flip it, give it another coat, and that's it. I let it dry and it is done. And it already looks pretty good. Pretty happy with it, so awesome. That's it. So it eh, could be a little cleaner. Um, you know, this was an experiment to see if I could get away with using uh, multiple layers, multiple colors. It could look better. I think the biggest flaw with this design is that the blue is so dark that the black doesn't contrast with it very well. And it's not even black. It's like a dark gray. But it, it printed pretty well. It's pretty square, pretty, pretty smooth and glossy. Um, so, I mean, it's a pretty legit looking, uh, piece. And I think if I had just done something simpler, uh, a one color relief design, like it, it would be just about perfect. So pretty happy with it. Um, yeah, guys, uh, hope you enjoyed this. If you lasted all the way through the video, uh, wow. Cause it's, I think it's going to end up being like an hour long. Um, if you give this a try and you have some success, please let me know. I'd, uh, I'd love to see what other people can do and. Um, you know, this was my original idea and I, I think, you know, some fresh eyes might be able to come up with some, some, uh, some pretty cool things. So please let me know in the comments below, uh, hit like, hit subscribe. If you want to help my channel grow a little bit, feel free to go jump on Patreon and do that thing. And, uh, you know, I'll catch you guys in the next video.